Hi, I'm John Tiersma, and I teach 7th grade science at Valley Christian Schools in Cerritos. I've been teaching for about seven years, and I feel really blessed about um, the time in history that I'm coming into teaching with all the technology. I also feel blessed about the situation that I find myself in now, as all my students do have iPads, and we are um, figuring out how to use this fantastic tool. Today I'd like to talk about multimedia and the benefits of using it. And so I'll be sharing um, the benefits that I see for using multimedia along with a few sources that I've found. And I'm going to talk about how I use multimedia in my classroom. I love multimedia learning for myself and for my students. Robler and Dory state, educators recognize and use these systems, multimedia, when they see the powerful capabilities they offer to enhance classroom learning. They stated increased motivation, flexible learning modes, which means that many different types of learners can benefit from multimedia, and creative and critical thinking skills are developed. I'd like to share with you about these three benefits that I see and also how I use them in my own classroom. Let's start with motivation. A student who dislikes written assignments will be way more motivated to complete an assignment if it's a multimedia type of assignment. I see this in my own classroom. I used to do an assignment that was, um, you know, write a paragraph on whatever science topic. And then I decided to do a screen chomp, which is a screen casting app on the iPad where the students had to do a, a screen chomp of the same topic. Students were much more motivated to do the screencast assignment as opposed to write the paragraph. In an article on the role of technology and students' motivation, the author Hausand commented that today's youth do not necessarily view technology as an opportunity, but rather as an essential tool for their existence. Imagine the lack of motivation that you would have if you didn't feel like you had the right tools to succeed. Another benefit that multimedia provides is the opportunity to reach multiple students' learning styles. This is because multimedia itself is so varied. And when you have a classroom full of 30 students, many of them having different learning styles, you need to have a tool that can reach all these different students. This year, I had my students create a interactive textbook on an infectious disease. They used iBooks Author after doing research, and they included all sorts of multimedia, video, pictures, um, 3D images, interactive images, audio, and, uh, and what the coolest part about the book was that it reflected their learning style. And lastly, when students work on a multimedia project, they're able to use creative and critical thinking skills. I like this because it helps students prepare for the real world. Someday they're going to have a job where they're going to have to solve a problem and come up with some type of presentation or product that demonstrates how they solved it. One project that I created this year to help students work on their creative and critical thinking skills was a podcast project. I had students find someone to interview about the different types of evolution and their beliefs on them. Students had to take that footage, put it into GarageBand, add all sorts of sound effects or stingers in order to make a really cool sounding podcast that they were proud of. In the article, Rethinking Technology and Creativity in the 21st Century, Mersha and Yadav state that computational thinking can foster creativity by allowing students to not only be consumers of technology, but also build tools that can have a significant impact on society. That's a great example of using critical thinking uh, in a way um, that will benefit them in the real world. I hope this video has been helpful as you reflect on how to best use multimedia in your classroom.